playing with power. Well, it's officially been over one week since the launch of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I know, where does the time go? I have no idea. And alongside the game came a huge selection of third-party controllers, and a lot of those happened to be one of my favorite kinds, GameCube controllers. The GameCube was one of my favorite Nintendo systems of all time, so seeing this renaissance of GameCube controllers really gets me excited. And today, we have one more to take a look at. This is the Hori GameCube style battle pad. This thing just came out, it's officially licensed, and it is missing a few key features. Is it worth your money? Let's take a look. So right off the bat, the big thing you're gonna notice about this controller is it is indeed wired. There are other wireless options, but a lot of professional Smash players and just more serious gamers want the wired connection to get rid of some of the latency that you might experience using a wireless option. Now, that does have some drawbacks for this controller right off the bat. One of those drawbacks is if you want to play this in tabletop mode, you need to get yourself some sort of adapter, like the one I'm using right here. This is the multi-port USB play stand, also by Hori. This gives you the option to use four wired USB connections while you're playing in tabletop mode. But for most people, you don't have one of these lying around, so keep that in mind before you pick this thing up. However, for TV smashing, this thing works great. Now, before we get into how this handled in Super Smash Bros., I want to go over the features first. As I mentioned before, this is a wired connection. Besides that, there are some key features missing. Number one, no rumble, no NFC touchpad, and one of the most disappointing things about this controller is there's no accelerometer. That means no motion controls. There are a lot of third-party controllers that have started adding this feature in. That being said, if this is a controller you're thinking about picking up just for Super Smash Bros., it shouldn't matter. But if you're looking for a replacement, or maybe just an additional controller, this is going to be something you're going to want to really look into. Now right off the bat, you might notice this controller looks to be a bit bigger than a standard GameCube controller, and that's because it is. It's a bit wider, and it also is a bit thicker as well. Honestly, that hasn't affected my gameplay with this at all, and it really does feel comfortable to play with. Now overall, this controller works and really plays great. I have no issues playing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate with this controller. The buttons feel good, they're responsive, and everything really feels like a classic GameCube controller, with one minor exception. And this might just be me, but I have a feeling at least some of you might have the same kind of thoughts. The L and the R button on the very top of this controller don't have the dip that the official GameCube controller has. This is something that's really minor, but for me, I kind of rested my fingers in that kind of crevice, and I loved it. It felt great. And this has a more flat button. Again, not a massive deal breaker here, but for a classic GameCube fan, this might feel a bit different to you. But again, for most people, it's probably a non-issue. Now, again, in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, I noticed no latency whatsoever. Everything was responsive and smooth, and really, I'm not really the most professional Super Smash Bros. player there ever was, as you can probably tell by the footage, but it really felt great to me. Again, this is a wired connection, but this thing has an incredibly long cable, so don't feel too bad about this. Now the other thing you're going to want to keep in mind is how does it work with other games, and I'm happy to report everything seems to work fine with some minor exceptions. I tested this controller out using Katamari Damacy and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Both worked great, with the exception obviously of motion controls in The Legend of Zelda. I would have loved to see that feature added into this controller, but again, if this is something you're only looking for for specific games, it's not a total deal breaker, and for the price of $24.99, you can't really go wrong. If you do want to pick up something with a bit more functionality, there are other third-party options. We have links in the description down below. But again, if you're looking for something for Super Smash Bros. only, this is a really nice option for you. This thing also comes equipped with a turbo button, which a lot of other third-party controllers have too. I've never really been a fan of using turbo, but I know some people really like the option of having it there, so if you want it, this thing definitely has it. But there you go, the Hori GameCube style battle pad is available right now for $24.99. It's definitely a really good option if you're looking for a second or third controller for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and don't want to spring for the original GameCube options and the adapter. 
Again, if you want to pick these up, we have a link in the description down below. There's plenty of options to choose from. My favorites on this one are the Mario and the Legend of Zelda ones, but there also is a Princess Peach one that looks pretty darn amazing too. But let us know your thoughts about this controller in the comments down below. Alright, I'll see you guys soon with yet another video, but until then, stay wired in. Bye guys.